Greetings everyone! Once again, Dividend Lab. Today it's uh, March 1st, believe it or not. Where time goes, I don't know. Uh, one special note, uh, for, you know, deep in, the, deep in the bowels of the lab where we are, uh, our, our uh, esteemed colleague Mike Morton is not here today. He's, he's off and you know, Mike Morton's one of our guys who, who, who keeps us on track, so when, when the cat's away, the, uh, the mice will play. And with me, I got Todd Johnson. How are you, Todd? Uh, great, Mike. It's uh, great to be here. And how are you doing, sir? Oh, good. It was another. It was another week. Another good week, though. I mean, the, the you know we, the markets did what they did, you know, and and we had some up days and down days, and and it it was great. But you know, I thought that since Mike's not here, we'll do it a little different. Well, places and spaces, you know, and here we're present, and I'm looking forward to it, and I'm also looking forward to Mike being back in a week. So for now, you know, I, you know, I'm I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Okay. Well, you know, we're gonna forego the what the market did this week, and we're gonna forego what gold prices did. You know, I, you know, our people they they can look at you know Yahoo and find out what that. Well, let me, let me just stop you right there. Uh, uh, I I am excited about gold in the short term, just you know making some money because we do have a a gold position on the uh, dividend lab position sheet, and so I you know I'm enthusiastic about the the price going up, and our position benefits greatly if gold goes up and. You know, any source of uh, weekly income from the the options, you know, it's an added boost to the the net return. So just, you know, I think I think it's around 127.5, 128 G, um, GLD is a symbol I'm referring to, and so just FYI, I in the back of my mind, it's uh, it's always there. Yeah, it's, it's uh, always there. It's a, a, a source of potential income that's not a hundred percent correlated to the, the stock market right. and just so everybody knows out there you know uh, we're going to try to keep our podcast a little bit shorter today we you know we, we don't want to run them too far but there is one thing i want to talk about Tony. how about mike saying that uh, our goal is you know looking back we've been averaging 45 minutes so if we can keep the podcast down to 30 minutes i think that better serves the the listener and we can address questions and recent events and and, and still make you know a compelling weekly update I, I think once you go past 30 minutes you know it tests the the time demands of the of the listener so uh for, for those listening right now the goal uh for all the podcasts that we do uh, for the private group or, or for the uh, for the dividend lab group and I'm including the big deal within that uh, we're gonna try to keep these uh, to, to yeah. manageable you know not dogma you know 30 minutes and then we shut down the machine but uh, you know around 30 minutes I think is is adequate and you know also during that time we're uh, you know, in the, in the week we've answered questions and sent out updates. So, uh, you know, we, we respect your time and we want to try to tighten the podcast to about 30 minutes or so. With that, let's jump in. For the first thing I, I wanted to talk about, and at least, you know, we've seen this on the forum, was uh, the hedging. And actually, at this point, there, there was actually even some talk of, of uh, getting rid of some hedging, I guess. And I think we, you know, we've touched on it in the forum. We've touched on it last week. And you know, what makes Dividend Lab and and you know, Big Deal, the private group, I think so dynamic and so different is is we hedge. And and you know, we we go over this again and again every week. But you know, it's it's really that important. So just to know that for Todd and I and everybody else at Dividend Lab, you know, the 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 odds of us taking our hedging positions off our equities or off our option trades because because they create too many positions or because they're not uh, or you know they're 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 hard to manage or or, or we lose money when the market goes up that's not going to happen those hedges 
are going to stay, and there's there's really, I would say, there's almost no debate on that. Would you follow me on that one, Todd? Yeah, I would take it a, a, a step farther. I would say Dividend Lab, it's a newsletter, and it's a newsletter with stock holdings. The private group, how it's different, is I look at it, I, I view it as a portfolio, treat it as a portfolio with, you know, specific allocations, specific hedges, and so that that's clearly different, but in the private group, we definitely hedge on the Dividend Lab position sheet because it is, at the end of the day, a newsletter. That's what, that's what it is. It's a, a newsletter. It's different than Motley Fool in the sense that we want positions hedged because I would rather not have the newsletter and I would rather have the newsletter going, existing, and have hedge positions than to not hedge positions. Right. So, you know, I live in the, the real world and people that, uh, you know, lived or, you know, went through the 2008 time frame, the 2000, uh, back in, you know, the downturn in 1994, uh, the early 70s, uh, you know, the nifty 50 in the uh, early 70s, uh, it, uh, 9/11, the implications of a, a, a non-predictable event. Uh, the the people that hedge typically know why they're hedging. They're trying to avoid right. losses, and so uh, it, yeah, it's a non-event for me. Um, it's going it, to happen. It's going to happen, and uh, I'll also work, you know, with Alex. If you know, if if somebody at home wants to buy 100 shares of XYZ and not hedge, you know, that's immaterial to me, you know, when I'm buying that same 100 shares and buying a hedge, when I buy a car, a house, you know, I, I insure, I hedge against the losses. I buy, I buy the car insurance, and the same thing is true for a portfolio. And there's some people that won't do it and think, and there's some people that think that a rolling uh, stop uh, works. And so, you know, everybody has their own style. And just, you know, our style, speaking for, for you, Mike, and uh, Mike Morton and myself, uh, we hedge. And now as far as the, the covered calls that you were about to or you kind of alluded to, uh, we want to have the caller position, sometimes we want to uh, sell covered calls on our stock only if we're not going to lose the potential for some big upside. And I say that with, you know, some of our biotech names, if they are approved of a significant position, or if they are, let me backtrack, if, if we have a biotech and they are approved good for, for uh, fast track or uh, orf, orphan drug status for uh, th their drug pipeline. The stock can double, triple, you know, quad, you know, go sure. from ten to a hundred, you know, overnight. And so we, on that, let's say we own four hundred shares. Maybe on that we sell two covered calls. And so we still can benefit from the the, mm -hmm. the upside, but um, but we have the hedges in place that would protect us from the downside if they receive bad news on a product. But we're still we still have only two of the four sure. uh, of the uh, two hundred shares are have a covered call right. that is sold, and we have two hundred that yeah. can benefit from you know yeah. a lot of upside. Yeah, there is definitely an art. To hedge it, you know, you, you can't just run out and there and there is an art to it. I mean, so for example, you can't you know uh, have have a, a stock X Y Z and then every month run out at right at the money line and buy a put. You know, I mean, you know, that's not 
you know, that is that is that hedging? It's hedging. But if you did that every month and for some reason expires every month, could it eat into your profits? You know, sure. There's a definite art to hedging. And depending on the type of equity you're running with, you know, is it a biotech? Is it a blue chip? You know, you know what is it? Um, there is a definitely an, an art to hedging, but the the concept of us just abandoning our hedging, you know, is is moot. I think that's good. I think we, we kind of address that. So um, let's move on to um, the fewer positions that maybe we're doing. You know, I know people, you know, they like status, you know, status quo and they like it. But, you know, we've we've when things happen you know, you have to adjust, like interest rates, you know, you have to adjust. And I know, especially for Dividend Lab and, and stuff, we, there's been now, we're, we're, we're doing some changes, and we have a fewer positions coming up. And, uh, care to speak to any of those, Don? Yeah, this, uh, thanks, Mike, that's a, that's a great topic. The interest rate ha has declined, I think it's around 2.66 or so, and, I found there's some good opportunities in the mortgage rates, and it it may be about two years since I I can say that, and that also applies to some the business development corporations, the BD, B, BDCs, uh, boy, uh, Delta Charlie, Delta Charlie, yeah, that's military jargon right there. Um, and we're about so, the farthest away from military as you can think but, but yes, oh yeah, it is. Yeah. Yes, oh, yeah. Yes. well we do own uh, Lockheed and uh, and that's done very well the stock <laughs> price uh, um, okay um, but the and we do own taser and, and we did uh, sell uh, Ruger yeah so but nevertheless uh, the uh, the portfolio and I kind of went in depth on the the forum uh, yesterday Friday Today's Saturday, March 1st, and on earlier in the week, there was a stock that went up, I think it was like 30% or 50%, and I personally owned the stock, and I personally owned uh, options, and so I benefited, and I normally would have had that on the Dividend Lab uh, position sheet. And the reason I did not was because I simply tried to reduce the number of positions. And that was my fault. So a lot of people lost out on being aware of, to, to buy a specific stock or the merits on why to buy a specific stock. And so with that being said, I, I did add some income names, the BDCs. Um, as you, ARCC is well, one that we added. They pay quarterly dividends. Uh, one name that has done very well for us in the portfolio is Main Street, uh, symbol M-A-I-N. They pay monthly dividends, and that's, that's prob that, that is my favorite mm -hmm. B, um, BDC. But we, we added a couple other uh, BDCs this week, and that simply is for the yield, which ranges between 9 to 14%. Uh, per name, and with dividends reinvested, it, you know it's, it's far closer to 14 to 15 percent. PSEC Prospect was an, a name that we added. It's not my favorite uh, BDC. It pays a monthly dividend, but it, it's just a way to have money coming in. You know, it pays 12 percent. You're probably looking at, uh, you know, with selling some covered. Uh, calls in addition to re reinvesting the monthly dividends, probably looking at a, a net return of 18% over a year, and I so that that's one area that I'm building out is the BDCs. Uh, the second being closed end funds. I like those. Yep, I I, I know you do, and that's why we have ETJ, mm -hmm. which. Um, with, with dividends reinvested each month, uh, will yield between 17 to 22 percent per year. And <laughs> how can you argue with that? Yeah, but... um, no, you, one can. Uh, you know, I, you know, being being able to look at any investment, the pros and cons. You know, respectfully, you know, on on the the benefits and the risks, 
and why not to own it? You know, if you have a if you have a limited amount of capital, and you can either put it in ETJ or uh, a stock that you really that you know very well and you believe it's going to do extremely uh, good over the next 18 months. You know, you may want to allocate your your sure. money, money differently. But we we, we picked up. Uh, you know we have the ETJ, we have ZTR. The uh, so so we're we're building we're building that now. And not to not to over or, or go off on a tangent in the uh, private group. Just re referring to the closed end funds, I am likely to have a. A basket or a folio, as they called it, folio FN or folio investing.com, uh, just full of BDCs, MLPs potentially, because there's you know the K1 or, or the tax reporting that that is uh, sure. so awkward and uh, closed in funds within the the folio, and so you can have up to 50 names in the folio. And so I'm building or, or working with the, the program folks to build out a, a folio that would have up to 50 income names and the positions would be rebalanced probably every two weeks or uh, monthly and then every name would pay a dividend is most likely the scenario. There's some closed-in funds that, that don't that only pay a, an annual dividend, and whether those would be included, you know, I would need to think about. But all all the names would be income producing, the positions would be rebalanced, and so I, I'm really excited about that as a, a separate folio. The, and for those people listening, the the only way that one could do that is by using uh, folioinvesting.com or foliofn.com and to build a basket that allows you to rebalance quickly uh, in you know in a matter of minutes if you try to do that on your own it's not going it to work and it's going to make you frustrated and it just you know make you spend countless hours on something that you could have done for you know right. or t 10 minutes and folio fn.com costs Two hundred ninety dollars a year. Uh, there, there's two window trades, as they call them, where you're not you don't pay per trade. You, you there's a, a trading window in the morning, and then in the afternoon, you you know what time that it occurs, and you can set per, uh, parameters on on how much a, any given security can be up or down for rebalancing, but. It, it does the trading for you and it does the position uh, buying for you and it's simple and so th this would be a, f a folio or a quantitative screen uh, a mechanical screen and aaii.com has all the information you want on that topic but th th it would just be a whole basket designed just for income and just so I'm very excited about that I, I have my own and they're tweaked a little bit different than what I think this new one may be. So, but just an FYI for uh, for people that do like the uh, the closed end funds and the BDCs and the assets that that pay monthly or quarterly or potentially we'll see uh, uh, dividends or distributions. Right. Okay. Great. So I think that we've kind of talked about the. I would say the shift in positions that, that we're seeing. Last, let's go through and, and our, our very uh, well, anticipated. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, Mike. Just to, to bring the two elements that you've uh, brought up, the the two of the core uh, hedging and the interest rate sensitive stocks, the BDCs, the CEFs, and some of the uh, MLPs that I bought um, this week. Um, the we ha we bought those because my view is, and it's supported by government data that may or may not be 
accurate, but nevertheless, I think it's fair to say the country is not growing as fast as we would like, and so interest rates really haven't picked up to the extent that I expected. So some of these positions we have, you know, they could be sold if interest rates do increase. Sure. And in the interim, we have a TBT, that's a symbol, mm -hmm. and that's a hedge against rising, uh, the rising interest rate. And so, and to put it in your words, it's, it's a hedge against the closed-end funds, BDCs, sure. and other well, interest rate sensitive securities. Yeah, and that, and you know, that's really important because I think a lot of people, you know, if you think about it, you have a lot of closed-end funds. Let's say you pick up four, five, six, seven closed-end funds. You know, those things are going to be very interest rate sensitive. They're just going to be, even, even if the assets they hold, like, aren't interest rate sensitive themselves and they're selling cover calls, it, it, it doesn't matter. They're going to be interest rate sensitive. Just, just That's just the name of the game. And so how do you hedge uh, a closed-end fund? Well, you're not going to buy puts on it. You just, you know, they don't have them. The options don't trade on those closed-end funds. So TBT is the way to do it. You're right. Well, and two things on that. Uh, ETJ is going to... Right. It's a closed-end fund for a a flat or declining mm -hmm. market and, and it won't do as good as other um, symbol EXG Edward X-ray Gamma Gamma in a bull market that's more military talk for you by the way okay and uh, EXG <laughs> it's a uh, it pays monthly dividends now uh, symbol ETJ it, it pays monthly dividends, but it has, by definition, it's an alternative alternative clo It's an alternative asset class. Uh, when you go to Eaton, Eaton Vance, it, it has its own uh, label as an alternative sure. asset class. And what they do is they, in many ways, what we do, to a limited degree, we buy protective puts and we sell right. calls. Right. Yes. The, the calls pay for the puts, so the the uh, so uh, so it, now it, Mike, if we owned um, a close end fund, and I don't think that we do right now. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. But the great thing about close end funds is being able to buy a dollar worth of equity for like ninety cents, right? And so you start off as a winner. Now. Now, you may start off as a winner. You get you bought a dollar for ninety cents. It pays an annual, uh, let's say, ten percent dividend yield, and we're reinvesting that yield. The the, the yield being uh, the the monthly or the quarterly distributions dividends, and what we can do with a typical closed-end fund that that thrives in bullish times is we can. Uh, buy a put on the 500 or the Russell 2000 symbol IWM because if they all they own is stocks that are uh, you know in the S&P 500 that they will the, the SPY put will go up if the market goes down sure. and that closed end fund will also go down now if uh, now a, a a BDC like M A I N or A R C C that we own, some of those, I don't have the the names and the percentages that they're uh, that they have the interest rate hikes protected, but there's many that have built into their business model a zero risk when interest rates move up two mm percent -hmm. you know from sure, sure. 1.5 to 3.5 so it's built in uh so we're hedging it by the tbt as you said but typically we'll also have you know a far out of the money uh, protective put and the main thing with that is just like on a if a 9-11 happened or just a a massacre or, or a, 
uh, BDC had fraud involved and the stock lost 80%, we, we would want to have that protected put simply to protect this against the individual name risk. And right. so like, if main, uh, M-A-I-N, a name that we owned, if it's trading at 34, 35, we might buy, you know, at least I would want to buy a $25 strike put. And that that means that if it's at 35, that we have at worst, worst case scenario, we can lose $10 per share. So it'd be 35 to 25. The $25 put allows us to know that in the worst case scenario, although we're very bullish on MAIN as a BDC and a monthly dividend pair, the worst case scenario, let's just hypothetically say uh, fraud is involved by the, the CFO or the, the accounting team. Uh, and so we, we would lose 33% of our invested capital. And so that, you know, that provides, you know, it's not going to protect 100% against losses, but, you know, at the worst case scenario is, you know, a 30% loss. So right. that's, a, you know, I, in general, I, I think that that's our goal in the portfolios, right. uh, whether it's a private group, the platinum, select, with the um, other, group, other, other group. yeah, any group. big big deal, any anything that we work on, we want to, you know, at some point, just limit our losses to 30% or any given number you want. But, um, you know, not not to limit or, or say that we'll, the maximum loss we're willing to take is 5%. Because once we pick such a low number, then we're going to pay a, a, a high dollar amount for the for those puts. insurance. Yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. It's the art of the hedge, or heart of the hedge. You know, let's move on. I, I, I really want to get into our, and I don't know if we'll get through all, but our ever uh, ever famous top 10 <laughs> that we've talked about. Now, I think what we've probably shown here is is we're not really going to be able to have a, a, a top 10 that's static. We're going to be moving because, let's face it, there's a lot of dynamics that come into play. We just talked about interest rates just right there and, and how we've had a change that's, that, that's, a, that's brought by those. So let's just do our top, for our top ten this week. Why don't we just take a look at some of the of the stuff that you added on for Dividend Lab? And I like a lot of these names. One you talked about. Let's let's talk about this one. Is your Aris Capital? Sure. And just to highlight that uh, top ten, Mike. Maybe the yeah because stock prices move up and down. You know a OCIP was a name that you know was my favorite name for uh, quite some time but then natural gas prices started moving higher and uh, that's a direct expense for that MLP and that that made the position and undesirable and so the the top 10 is going to change at any given moment. The the ETJ and the ZTR, the closed end funds, those are pretty consistent because they're typically selling at a 10% discount, sure. offering a 10% yield. So as you indicated, the positions each week, I can, I'll create you know, our own top 10 list, and it may be, you know, adding some uh, potentially three or four, if if one were just a start today, uh, to add three or four closed-in funds, two BDCs, sure. and uh, one dividend growth stock, and one MLP, and, you know, a warrant, or uh, a spinoff. Right. So it could be... Yeah. Uh, for, for any given week, uh, I, I think the top 10 just serves as a reminder that, you know, as time passes, there's opportunities 
to buy and opportunities to sell positions to strengthen the portfolio. Right. And it, I don't, I don't think that it, you know it necessarily has to be, you know, literally ten every week. I mean, we could, but we, we want to be practical. And mm -hmm. if there's not ten names on any given week, you know, we'll state the top eight and. Knowing that they can move, yeah, and, and will move quick, so you wouldn't want to, you know, you you you'd want to be nimble and you know, and and not you know just be fixated on these top ten, seven, eight, and because things things can and do happen. Right, and my just to to one quick follow up regarding that top ten, I did yesterday, as you know, I reduced our I reduced our uh, Google Priceline positions took some profits mm -hmm. and so it wasn't a time for us to be buying I took some profits right and, and actually those were some of the names we we're going to talk to you about so yeah okay yeah. great but let's uh yeah let's uh let's and we're and, and for folks at home we're we're well aware that our goal was to limit this call to 30 minutes but we also wanted to spend some time on discussing on these calls going forward so we're, although we're going over that timeline this call in the future it definitely will be mm -hmm. uh, limited in length so my apologies for those folks uh, <laughs> listening um, and you know let's let's do this BDC the the the, the Aries now the, that's one we've that, that's a popular name I've seen that one before I like that name a lot what I saw that you put that on this is this is the the BDC's and and some of the other the mortgage REITs that are starting to look attractive to begin with our interest rates where they are now so Right, and if you, um, you know, on that particular name, I believe I have on the position, let's see, if you go down just a little bit, my, yeah, we, you know, we're looking around 9% uh, dividend yield. On that name, we will reinvest dividends. I say that because ARCC it has one of the best management teams and it takes care of uh, the the risk level mm -hmm. on the, the debt offerings and what they provide for their clients. So this is definitely uh, a BDC to own simply due to the high quality of its management team. And I would put the I would put their management team below an OAK, a name that we owned, which is a partnership with Howard Marks and, and below uh, OLC, which, which has, you know, some good dividends coming up too. And at OXLC, we have 300 shares as we do in ARCC. But, but the OXLC, uh, you know, they specialize in non-agency debt. So that's, that's debt that is not guaranteed by the federal government. Mm -hmm. Let's make note there that there's also Mary put on that. So it's not just a straight out, you know, purchase that we bought 300 shares. There were three puts January uh, 15 puts of the ten dollar strike that came along with that so yeah and there's your hedging yeah and if you uh, Mike and I are looking at the uh, trades that were sent out and just you know to be to to have perspective when we're talking with you so when you're re reading the positions and and trades you you know we're all we're all aligned the that hedge on 300 shares you know, it costs sixty dollars and get action through uh, January, the third Friday of uh, January two thousand fifteen. And uh, you know, I did I did not look, but I very well could sell a covered call and and likely will look at the uh, the next um, uh, call that I can sell so that the insurance is free. It, yeah, has a zero cost basis. Right. Let's move on. Number two, I know it was something was the Emerge Energy Services. You know that one came in also, nine percent yield on that one. Yeah, that for for folks listening, uh, that was a name that we bought, and and I, I believe we bought it. Maybe it's been a a year ago, and I, if memory serves, we either bought in the high teens. <clears throat> Like nineteen or uh, twenty, twenty-one dollars, and and it was the same time that 
uh, Lin Energy, L-I-N-E, was having its uh, scandal investigations. And because risk is the primary issue for us, I sold the EMES, and I would, I would do it again, despite the fact that the name has increased in price, uh, simply because when we bought it, protective puts were not available. By that, I mean it was uh, a recent IPO, and normally it's 30 days before an IPO will, or a new income name will have a protective puts to buy. So the if we would have uh, held on to it from uh, the start to finish, you know, we would have benefited greatly. But, you know, I wanted to uh, contain the risk. And 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 so we own it. I I have not stopped following the name. The you know we got a nine percent yield. I, there's some potential um, a, a LNG terminal uh, topic in the background that could prop up this name even further. But this is a strong name that's very profit profitable and it's going to be yielding close to 10 percent with dividends reinvested you're looking at most likely 15 to 18 percent on an annualized basis great i like that one too boy so many to talk about uh, going, back, going back to that number uh three mike the the data uh, uh, i'm sorry uh yeah on, on data uh, and I'll, I'll I'll highlight a couple of these because I know we spent a lot of time on on other positions. But data we adjusted the the call to our benefit. We took money off the table, and we actually have uh, we actually control 200 shares now versus uh, 100. But data has really been a strength, uh, a name of a great strength, and uh, we simply took money off the table and. Uh, to put to be able to put money into other other positions. Now that number four, uh, the symbol VRNS that we bought yesterday, for our purposes, I indicated a purchase of 150 shares, and in the update I indicated, you know, that we were buying 150 versus 100 that went that went out on a Thursday, but the the VRNS. That name is the the revenues are growing at for over forty percent. The business model is they're not the quality is not as significant as or not not as excellent as uh, uh, D A T A in number uh, three, but still it's growing very fast and it it doubled the IP, uh, the IPO price was twenty two. It closed at 44. I sent out a note to uh, some folks that we work with privately that when we bought it at uh, 40 or 41, when it was at 46, you know, that I wouldn't blame anybody in taking a five or six dollar profit per share, you know, within a matter of an hour, hour and a half you know, just to lock in those profits. Right. Jeez, boy, you know, going down the list. Lo lots of other great ones. I know that, you know, some more uh, BDCs, you know, oh, yeah, TCP. T T yeah, uh, TCPC is a uh, uh, very it's a high quality credit uh, BDC. One name on there, Mike, that I really like is MFA. Yep. And that's a, uh, a mortgage rate. To, and you know it's yielding 10% plus. Again, this is this is um, uh, the, the purchase is based upon uh, the, their, uh, their the stock price versus book value per share, expected a div, uh, dividend yield. Now I closed uh, Nate, baby um, symbol B A B Y uh, Natus. I closed that position mm -hmm. because I wanted to. Uh, uh, generate some or to open up some free cash flow for some of these income stocks that are uh, the paying 10% plus 
and on the mortgage rates and some of these BDCs, you know, I do specialize in not only the the names, but working with uh, colleagues such as yourself and also people that specifically on researching these names as their pro profession. So I wanted to make sure that we do uh, mm -hmm. capture their names. Now with uh, Yahoo, Mike, one thing I wanted to do with that name was to, it wasn't generating any income. No. And I wanted, so my actions were to close the stock and the uh, the two protective puts and to reallocate the money into the um, the MFA and what other names did we oh, no, that number 13 there Mike the, uh, <clears throat> the CSTE that's that's a play that we have that's on the the home building cycle uh, people like high quality uh, courts for their uh, you know kitchen or uh, dining area mm -hmm. quarters mm -hmm. and uh, CST is just doing incredible things and so we have that as a housing play we have with that one name that people should pay attention to try to highlight it and I'll have research on it but VNCE Vince Holding and it's kind of a uh, Michael Kors uh, KORS that we have is a uh, that's done very very well for us. We have 100 shares of Michael Kors uh, that's trading at about 100. But VNCE is similar to the business model of Michael Kors, and so I because it doesn't pay a dividend, I I let us establish a position, and I'm selling calls so that ideally we can establish a position in the name. Um, at a zero cost basis because it isn't paying a, a dividend I want I want the portfolio to have a you know ideally a, like a five percent yield on our current stock holdings and the positions within it and I try to be very specific on the names that we're gonna reinvest the dividends and on those names that are paying dividends I want those dividends to provide provide more shares, and in many cases, those uh, share prices will be going up in value as their businesses do good, and the dividends per quarter or per year will be increasing. And as we we're reinvesting the dividends, which fully OFN would do for somebody um, automatically, automatically. Yeah. and I, and I know like. TD Ameritrade does it too, but uh, Folio FN is just great at uh, the dividend reinvestment. But on the names that did not pay a dividend, I established some bullish positions in the pursuit of establishing equity yep. holdings with a zero cost basis and so that we're in some of these uh, dividend paying closed end funds, preferred stocks. BDCs, mortgage REITs, MLPs, and uh, warrants, and dividend growth stocks, and also uh, IPOs. I, you know, we want to have capital available for new ideas as, as they, they come out. Now, Mike, as you know, by looking at the, the positions, and some of the adjustments, you know, whether it's reducing our position in Google and Priceline uh, or reducing the Yahoo equity position, our goal is to uh, take, take advantage of opportunities in specific names. And if you can scroll down to find that, that, that spinoff name, Mike, that we really had a, a lot of fun with yesterday um, I'm looking the, the, oh yeah oh yeah yeah no the the, uh, the, 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 the stock price closed yesterday at 12.39 and we in the Avgo technology Mike that's one that I, that I really like uh, it's a uh, it's a you know debt free and just a high high quality name but the the 
there was a spinoff that we sold we sold yesterday and new media just to highlight this that that was one that I indicated to everyone it, it, it's a spinoff and it went through all the bankruptcy proceedings and creditors uh, so that uh, there there we go right there uh, number 30 Mike uh, SC MK but the the new media symbol N E W M is one name I, I have two names I want to highlight uh, for for this week. Uh, uh, new Me New Media N E W M. They own and I know I sent out an email to to the private group last night, but they own a lot of uh, physical newspapers and a lot of online papers or. You know, people in Massachusetts where uh, New Media owns a lot of papers, you know, a lot of them are, you know, the the wicked New Salem Times or whatever the name is, uh, you know, you'll, they must have uh, 30 wicked papers for uh, Massachusetts when you look at their, their uh, online papers. But New Media... You know, the a lot of people think the the paper business is is dead, and it is. But you know, people that are living in a smaller town or local community, they want to know the local news, and so they'll still watch TV to find out what the local weather will be like. And they also want to go and find the local news, whether it's the physical paper or the online website for you know Smallville newspaper.com they can go there and see you know who the who won the mayor the mayor results you know last week and the classified ads for for smallville and that's what the local papers provide and and uh, companies doing business in smallville whether it's attorneys or um, you know a furniture store they want to advertise in smallville so I'm really excited about the new media asset. Uh, we own it. Uh, I'm likely to pick up more shares. I'm likely to pick up some call options as we move forward. I fully expect, and management has stated, they will shut down the physical newspapers when the online, uh, with higher profit potential, it will suffice and the the physical newspapers are taking away too much of the net profits so new media spin off from uh, nct is is now trading and it's n e w m so and my if going to the last one uh we we added as uh, as folks know uh we had and th this will be the last one for the uh, Dividend Lab Big Deal Weekly uh, Podcast. And I, again, I apologize for going over our time, but um, you know, everybody kind of kind of has a sense of of uh, our plan for the podcast going, go, you know, in the future, um, which is even taking me further beyond the, <laughs> the thirty minutes. I, 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 Mike, I do I do apologize. To, Seriously, I, uh, I, you know, I started, you know, thinking about so many issues, and so. I, well, there was I, a lot of trades. There was a lot of trades this week, and not just trades. There was a shift, you know, like we talked about. Oh back, yeah, back yeah. to back to BDCs. Yeah, yeah. which is which is new. We had to address that. So. Yeah, let me make one statement, Mike, just to kind of s summarize everything. Number thirty, the SZMK. We already owned uh, the. 500 shares that were bought uh, eight days ago. So, oh, what day that would have been on the uh, February 20th, 20th or 21st? 20th. Yeah, yes. at 9.5. So, 500 shares of Zismic, and I haven't even had time to write up the the research. But um, what I what I also did was I bought it, it, it's a adjustment 30 on. Um, uh, on the uh, top 10 and this was a shift in lower rates and getting our portfolio set 
to do better than, uh, you know, we're all competitive and I think we all want to do better than um, other folks and we want to do the best job we can for other folks. But uh, trade number 30, we added five calls of our, to add to our long 500 shares of Zizmec Incorporated. That's Sam, Zell, Michael, Kilo. Kilo. What, what's the uh, military uh, for uh, Z, Mike? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. So, Zorro? <laughs> no, is it Zebra? I don't I don't know. Okay. Was so, well, Sam's Sierra Zebra Mike Kilo. I, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I was yeah. never in the military. So Okay. So. <laughs> I mean, but you you are an expert on uh, on gastro topics here. <laughs> well, I mean let's let's be honest, you're an expert on uh, military uh, like low Lockheed and our <laughs> if you look at our return on Lockheed and my Mike, I mean that that has been impressive. Well, <laughs> but but we but, better stick on topic. Yeah, right? yeah, <laughs> yeah. Get what? Well, I'll be apologizing again for getting Mike started on uh, Lockheed mm -hmm. and Boeing. Um, but let me let me just summarize very quickly on Zesmec. It's a spinoff, zero debt. We bought it on the twentieth or twenty-first. We own the five hundred shares for eight days. Yesterday we sold the stock after it ran up 26% in eight days. You know, we're not pigs, we have to take profits. So sold it, and we, but at the same time we owned five calls with a strike price of 11 that expires in June of 2014. So that allows us to control 500 shares of Sismic strike price 11 and through June. Of 2014. Well, that was uh, done on either Wednesday or Thursday when the stock price was still lower. Yesterday, the stock price moved up another, you know, eight or nine percent, closed at 12.39. Yesterday, what we did was we sold our, share, our shares, made 26 percent in one week on our stock. Our options doubled in two days and so what I ended up doing was the at the end of the day we can we now control on this very profitable trade 2,000 shares at strike price 13 with the stock price closing on Friday at 12.39 so the strike price is a little out of the money not too far but 12.39, we own 20 calls, giving us a right to buy 100 shares. L let me let me repeat this, Mike, for the the home game player. Uh, we have 20 calls. We have a home game. Yes, <laughs> that we have we 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 have 20 calls that gives us the right to buy 2,000 shares of Zizmec at $13 per share through. June. Now, what I did to also take in profit or bring in cash flow so we can buy some uh, Coca-Cola, we can buy some uh, uh, blue chip growth names, uh, Under Armour, uh, uh, Johnson & Johnson. What, what we sold were, was uh, 15 calls that expire in three weeks, March 20th. We sold 15 Zizmec calls, strike price 14, and that provided close to $2,000 for selling those 15 calls. So, you know, $2,000, let's just put that into, you know, any of the assortment of income names income that we name. have or a hedge. And that's the way we do it. And with, with, with the portfolio, Mike, when you were saying reducing the, the position count, our goal here is to buy when it's in, in our to our advantage to buy spinoffs, buy warrants, buy stocks that have major stock buybacks, stocks that are coming out of bankruptcy, buy close-end funds trading at a significant discount. 
where we can buy a dollar for 80 cents or we can buy a, a stock that's down 50 percent because people don't understand the business and are just selling it off and or a, a stock that has zero correlation to the stock market but people are just selling stocks because they're scared so we want to we want to be opportunistic the things that we specialize in are mortgage rates spin-offs BDCs MLPs closed-end funds uh, warrants rights offerings around the world and in the US and so a lot of those names and yesterday was a perfect example was Ismec when the value is unlocked when six percent on a position in one week we want to sell it we want to sell it and lock in the gains and put it into another uh, name and uh, you know that that's a goal so we we may have positions that are on the position sheet that may be temporary and when you're looking at the position sheet um, or on an email when I say we're not reinvesting dividends you can read into that it's because it's going to be a short-term position you know maybe a year six months two years if interest rates are moving up that we want to take advantage of the current environment and but we're going to exit because it's a special situation so you know we're time sellers and we're also uh, specializing in special situation and we have a few core positions and a lot of uh, temporary positions that we're borrowing until the true value is unlocked and the reason that we're having this conversation as we're talking about this Mike is earlier in the week there was a name that you and I or, or, or that I owned at least and I owned uh, calls and I owned the stock and it really jumped up earlier this week the reason it wasn't on the dividend lab uh, position sheet was because I had uh, intentionally not put uh, some some names on there simply to reduce the, the number of positions well that cost a lot of people who invest in those um, special situ situation uh, they, they cost them money and so I'll try to be more diligent about labeling positions as special situations versus uh, core holdings and uh, because in the future I don't want to have to explain that uh, that Mike and that you don't own Zizmec calls and Zizmec stock is because I wanted to reduce yes the, the number of positions <laughs> great well I know we've gone over a lot of time I think you can see that we really had some some good movements we had some great wins this week so we'll go ahead and close it out thanks everybody for listening Hopefully uh, next week we'll have Mike Morton back, and he'll be uh, he'll be here to keep us on track a little better, I guess. Mr. Johnson, thank you. Yes, it's been my pleasure. Th thanks to everybody out there, and ask any qu questions on the forum, private group. Please send me emails uh, to Mike and I, and we'll make sure to get back to you. And we'll have an assistant uh, email to also CC so that. Uh, you know, you're, you receive an immediate, or not immediate, but uh, your, your email does not go unnoticed. Thank you, and good night, everybody.